I'm on time. I'm on time. I have to always be on time, guys. That is one thing about me is I am not good at a lot of things, but I'm pretty good at being on time. And I just want to thank you guys for taking the time out of your day to spend it with me. I think it's really, really awesome that we're doing this today. Say hello. Let me know where you're from. What we're going to be doing right now is we're going to go through how to win your next 3.5 match against a pusher. Oh, doesn't that sound good? I know that online in the online world and so many of my students who play club tennis, it is one of those things that drives people crazy. It's like, I've invested so much time in my game. I've got much better strokes and I just lose to these people. I know I should be crushing and it just drives you nuts. And as a coach, it's hard to watch. It's like, oh, they put in the hard work and I could just see their little spirit cracking over there watching the match and, and, it's, and it's tough for everybody. So this is going to, uh, I think, be, there is no easy win against a pusher. Let me just say that. But this is going to give you a clear picture of a play you can run that I know is going to be very successful that you might not have thought about. And uh, the student that we're going to use as an example today, she didn't think about this. And when we ran it, it, it helped her a lot. So thank you guys for being on. Uh, before I really get into this lesson, uh, okay, hello from Poland, from, from Boston. We have a 55-year-old, 3.5. Uh, welcome. And uh, so let me know, yes, uh, if you can hear me. Can you guys hear me pretty good? Uh, I, I think you can. Uh, this seems to be going smoother and smoother, these uh, YouTube lives. They always kind of scare me, but I think we're doing good. Let me know that you can hear me. Let me know where you're from and what level player you are. And uh, also, let me know, are you, are you someone who's frustrated playing a pusher? Or do you maybe consider yourself, thank you, Boston, Harvard, B-I-M-S. Um, are, are you someone who gets frustrated when you play a pusher? Do you like playing pushers? Or are you a pusher? Lost to a huge lobber yesterday. Couldn't come at a better time, says Boston Harvard BMS. Okay, awesome. Well, we know that Boston Harvard BMS is going to really enjoy this. So let's get into it. Let me just first of all tell you where this lesson today is inspired from. It's inspired from you guys, the students. And I was out there with one of my students, uh, Raven, who is, what do you mean by level player? Uh, we don't have a level player in Ireland. Okay, so... Are you a beginner, intermediate, intermediate, advanced, or an advanced player? My 12-year-old daughter struggles against pushers. She hits pretty flat. Okay, Paul says his 12-year-old daughter struggles against uh, pushers as well. I think we all do. It's kind of like a, a playing a video game where it's like a rite of passage. It's one of those boards. You go through the first couple boards easy, then you get to the pusher board, and you got to have a certain amount of skill to, to beat these players. They're, they're not easy to beat. Okay, we got Purple Heart, and uh, he's from um, 3.5 from Houston, intermediate. Awesome. Well, it looks like a lot of you guys are in the right place. Hey, as we go through this, if you're enjoying the material, I would love it if you give it thumbs up. Thumbs up to make me feel good. It really does. It gives me like an emotional boost. I know that's pretty shallow, but I do like to know that you guys are liking what I'm putting out there. Uh, I'm not frustrating you anymore. I, I used to be, but I passed that. That's awesome. Well, good for you. Uh, so likes are good. Um, comments, I love the comments coming in. Being interactive is a lot of fun. As I get into the lesson, I'm going to look at them less, uh, but I'm going to come back to them. So make sure you keep leaving your comments. And share this. If you have somebody who you know is frustrated by playing pushers, if you know someone needs to see this, maybe your doubles partner uh, or friend, then share it with them. Okay, so here's the story. I'm teaching Raven, who has been coming to me. She's been playing now for a couple of years, and she's really shot up. She started in a program we have called Tennis 123, which is for people who've never played tennis. She was one of those people, and I love these people, who became obsessed with tennis. Raven loves tennis. <laughs> Raven loves tennis. Uh, she has a cool um, a line on her Facebook page. It's like, uh, compare your, only compare yourself to the tennis player you used to be or something like that. that. I thought that was really cool. So she's really, really all about tennis. Thank you guys for the likes. And she has learned how to hit a pretty big ball. She's strong. I'm going to show you in a second. She's a strong lady. 
and she's got pretty advanced form for a 3.5 player. L let me let me state that again. She has pretty advanced form for a 3.5 player. She doesn't go out there and tap the ball around. She can really hit that thing. She's got a nice looking stroke. She's got the topspin on it, but it is not fully developed. Just because her, te and I think this is where a lot of people get stuck. Just because her technique is pretty good, it doesn't mean that it's perfect. It's not perfected yet, okay? So I just want to put that there. And she came to me and I said, okay, Raven, what do you want to work on today? We hadn't had a lesson in, in a couple of months. And I said, what do, you, what do you want to work on today? And she said, what I would like to work on today is I would like to work on hitting more topspin and more power. And I thought, okay. And I said, well, what do you want to hit more topspin and more power on? She goes, my forehand. I'm like, okay, Raven. Uh, and I was thinking in my head, the wheels were spinning, like Raven hits a pretty darn hard forehand with pretty good topspin for a 3.5 lady. So I'm wondering, well, why did she have this motivation to work on this today after we hadn't had a lesson for a while? All right, we've got uh, Je Jeanette or Janet on. She's a 3.0 uh, on from Florida. She's 3.0, 3.5. She's on a 3.5 team. Thank you guys for letting me know where you're from. That's awesome. So anyway, back to the story, I'm thinking, okay, Raven, well then why? Why do you want to work on this today of all days? And she said, well, I keep playing these people in the league and they don't do anything with the ball and I end up missing the shot at the very end of the point. It's, and I said, so you're controlling the point, you're in control of the point, but at the very end when you get like a short ball or something, that's when you blow it. And she said, yes, exactly. So I need to have more top spin and more power. I'm going, okay, all right. So <laughs> I'm thinking, let me know if this sounds familiar. Have you guys ever thought that this is the solution to your problem of beating a 3.5? It's like you hit the ball pretty good, but I need to hit the ball even better. I need to hit it even harder to just totally dominate and blow them off the court. I think a lot of people feel like that. Let me know if this is what you think. Okay, cool. We got a 3.5 from the Atlanta area. Ta ta I'm terrible with names. Uh, is it Talha? Uh, if you are, maybe we can do a lesson at some point. So anyway, uh, let me know if that's you. If you kind of go, yeah, I thought about that too. And I, I, I think I just need to come and get even better and hit harder. So what I want you to do right now, I'm going to share my screen. And I'm going to show you, this is always scary in the presentation, I'm going to show you Raven's shot, just so, just so you can get a, a, an idea of what I'm talking about, about how she can hit the ball pretty good. Okay, uh, so the screen, screen should start sharing. Let me know, can you guys, now you guys should be able to see uh, me right there. Let me know if you can see me. Okay, I can see it coming up. Awesome. So here we are. And now we're here with Raven. We're going to blow this up full full screen there for you guys. And I don't know how smoothly this is going to play, but I'm just literally going to play like two shots just so you can get a feel of how Raven hits the ball. Okay. Turning down the volume there. Here she goes. She's in that Ray position. Boom. <laughs> like to me for a 3.5 lady, a, a, a woman who's just been playing a couple of years, uh, that's not bad. Let's take another look. Boom. She had mishit that one a little bit. We'll, wa we'll watch one more, uh, one more ball. Give Raven the thumbs up, by the way, if you're watching this video. Uh, give a thumbs up to this video to support Raven. Bam. Okay. So you can see, not bad in my opinion. All right. Is it perfect? No. Can she improve her stroke? Absolutely. Uh, but let me just come back to you guys for a second. And then we're going to get into to the real meat and potatoes of the lesson. But I did just want to come back with you guys. This takes me a second. All right. So I think I'm back. So I just want to read, read your comments in general. Uh, certainly keep it classy. Be nice. Would you say that Richard says my high school son struggles against pushers and needs to learn how to get them off the baseline, stop making unforced errors? Kevin's a 3.5 from Huntington, California. Thank you. You can rally with your pro at a different level. You can't beat a 2.5 player. 
And, and that happens to a lot of people. Let me know what you think of, of Raven stroke, guys. Did that look like a pretty good stroke for a 3.5 player? Uh, again, I'm not saying it's perfect. I'm not saying that there's not room for improvement. And we're, we're certainly going to be working on that. But for somebody who's just been playing a couple of years, that to me looks like a stroke that from the baseline can dominate against a lot of players, especially a pusher who pretty much just patty cakes the ball over the net. Okay. And so I started to ask Raven a little deeper. I'm like, so when you get, when you get this short ball, you're just missing the shot. And she said, yes, absolutely. And this is an important writer downer here, guys. What I then asked her, I'm like, okay, well, if you're, I want you to write this down because this is going to be a big, a big key on, on especially if this point's going to work for you. And I want you to answer this question honestly too. If you're in a match and it's a key time in the match, do you feel comfortable hitting the ball and coming to the net and putting the ball away with a volley? Yes or no? Do you, would you, do you feel like you cover the net well? Do you feel confident and comfortable at the net well? Uh, do you have good technique on your volley? Do you, do you feel good about that? If you had to win the point, it's the last point of the match. Would you rather be at the net or would you rather be at the baseline? And she thought about it for a second and she said, I would rather be at the baseline. That's what she said. She said, I'd rather be at the baseline still dominating play. And so this is where the play came. And I want you guys to answer this question. Where would you guys rather be? Uh, volley well with pace on the ball, but not a floater. So Kevin, this is exactly right. A lot of people don't feel comfortable volleying floaters, okay? So that, that really intimidates people or having to put an overhead away to win the match. These are all what? They are skill. They take skill to come to the net and split step at the right time, cover the exact right angle, execute a perfect volley. And besides having to hit this approach shot well, this is all taking a lot of skill to get up here and put away an overhead to win a match on a, on a pressure point. You know how we feel, guys. Have you? I mean, playing tennis sometimes, it's a weird sport. I, I, I don't think there's a sport where you can get as nervous as tennis. And a lot of times there's not many people watching, but there's something inside. There's something about tennis that makes us very nervous. So to have to execute all this stuff on the most important moments of a match and in the most important moments of a point, it's tough to do over and over again. The pusher is always asking the question, can you do this all match? You are gonna get highlights when you play a pusher. That's what makes you feel good. You're gonna play some points against a pusher where you execute and you're like, yes, finally, why don't I just do that all match? What's wrong with me? There's nothing wrong with you. It takes a lot of skill to do that for two sets, three sets, two or three hours, you know a pusher is going to keep you out there on the court for a long time, right? All right, we got 50 on right now. This is pretty awesome. Make sure that you come on in. Let me know where you're from. Let me know what level you are and definitely get give this video a thumbs up. So here is the problem. Here is what it is, guys. And I'm going to be brutally honest with you guys. I'm going to compare your tennis game to cars, okay? The pusher doesn't do much. It literally just gets from point A to point B. It's, it's like that, it, it's, it's like that, uh, that clunker you don't want to give up, right? It, 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 can, it does its job. Somehow it doesn't break down and it just does what it's supposed to do. It's not going to turn any heads. It, it might even be made fun of out there, but the darn thing drives every day. You put the key in, it drives. That's what a pusher is. And lots of pushers out there they don't have any desire, and I shouldn't call them pushers, let's call them counter punchers, but we'll probably call them pushers again. <laughs> but they don't, a lot of them don't have any desire to develop advanced strokes. They're just like, look, I like going out on the court. I win 80% of my three, three, five matches. I no sweat. I like to go out there and just, I can find the ball. If they have good hand-eye coordination and they can match the ball up with their strings, they're going to make you play a lot of shots. And they don't have to think a lot about their technique, all right? Then you have, let's say we have a Honda Accord, a 2017 or 18 Honda Accord. It looks pretty nice. It's a pretty good car, uh, but it, it, uh, it isn't 
a high performance sports car. Like it, it can perform on the street. It, 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 can, it can look nice, uh, but it's not going to be in a race. You can't, you can't bring it down to the track and, and race it against a high performance sports car. You see professionals, maybe, maybe starting at like a 4.5 and 5.0 and up level, these people are starting to look more like high performance sports cars, especially the pros, the pros like your Roger Federer, your Rafael Nadal, Djokovic, Serena, the players that get a short ball and make it look so darn easy. Now, what it is, is a high performance sports car, it turns heads and we all want to play and look like that. Am I right? But the thing about doing that is your technique has to be absolutely perfect. That's number one. Like Raven's technique is pretty good. It's not perfect. It can break down, okay? It can be broken down under pressure. That's one. The other thing is we all are on limited time with tennis. Lots of you guys are totally obsessed. If you're on this call right now watching this, there's a good chance, which I love, you're a totally obsessed tennis player. But you don't have the time to commit as much time to tennis as a professional who they are always maintaining their game. They're, they, it's a high maintenance skill to consistently crush short balls and the pros work on it all day long. And what I want to ask you is, do you, do you go out there and work on short balls all day long to where it's on autopilot? I know for right now, I'm a coach. I don't play that much. It would take me a couple, three, four months of, of, of intensive training to where when I got a short ball at the later stages of the match that I would feel confident crushing the ball, okay? So this is your problem, guys. You're trying to perform like a high performance luxury sports vehicle when you're not. You're pretty good. You have better technique than your opponent, but it's gonna break, it, you have a stroke that's gonna break down under pressure, all right? Does this make sense? Are we making sense so far before we go to the board? Let me know, guys. All right, we got, all right, cool. Mr. Richie's on with us. He's a 4.0 from Indiana. We saw the forehand, but how is her backhand? How is her ability to direct the ball? Her backhand's okay, and her ability to direct the ball is pretty good, Alan. She is dominating from the baseline against most three, five people. That's what we're dealing with. We're, the scenario today is, guys, is where you're probably dominating from the baseline, but you're blowing it when it's time to win the point. And I'm going to show you how we can start taking all the skill. Here's, here's the lesson of the day. The lesson of the day is we're going to take the pressure of having to create all the skill at the most important time of the point, and we're going to take it. We're going to lift it off your shoulders, and we're going to say, hey, pusher who has no offensive skills, your turn. You've got to do it to win the point. That's the goal of this lesson. So let me share the screen again, and we're going to really dive deep. So I hope you guys are enjoying this. If you are enjoying it, please share this video with your friends. Please like it. Uh, subscribe to our channel if you're not already subscribed because we're going to do a lot more of these. We do a lot of instructional videos. Plus, me and Matt, we get silly sometimes. Uh, all right, so sharing the screen. Let's see, going to check this out, see what I'm sharing. So it should come up. Waiting for it. All right, awesome. Now, I'm excited about this. <laughs> I've got a new, I've got a new toy. This is going to be fun. So we're going to run through the plays that I did with, with Raven. So first we're going to have the pusher serving. Okay. You're going to get to see my amazing drawing skills. I'm a terrible drawer, but I think this will all make sense. That's a tennis racket right up there. And here is Raven returning. All right. And I'll show you the, the first mistake she made when we played our point. She's going to get here. She's going to get a forehand return. And the first point she played, she absolutely blasted a forehand back at me. Okay. She blasted a forehand back, back at me. And then without being aware, she moved to right here. Okay. She didn't even get all the way back to the middle. She moved right here. This is where she stood and someone asked before, how's her backhand? Her backhand is definitely much weaker than her forehand. 
So without even realizing it, she was leaving 80% of the court open and, having, and would have to hit a lot of backhands, okay? So this was mistake number one that I told Raven, and I want you guys to do this as well, especially if you do have a solid forehand. If you've got a solid forehand out there, you're really going to like this play. So what we're going to do, the first play, is we're going to run shade, okay? We're going to run some shade here on this first play or, or the first the first um, level of the point okay the first move we're going to make is we're going to hit this return whether you're hitting it cross court or if you can hit it down the line maybe even a high one down the line to get it going to the backhand is a good play uh, it really in a way i'd rather you go middle or if you can make the down the line down line's a little more risky because you're going over a higher point in the net just hit a solid return. It's a pusher, guys. They're not going to put the ball away. Don't put too much pressure on yourself. Don't miss returns. Just hit a solid return. The luxury that you have against a pusher is you have time to develop the point. Don't be in a rush. to. That's another thing, a mistake that people make against pushers. They start to get in a rush and a panic to end the point so quick. Look at it the opposite way. They're not going to hurt you. You have all day to develop the point you want. So... What's going to happen is I'm going to have her run shade now. I want her to come past the middle and get herself situated right here, okay? And then she's a good athlete too. As you saw her movement, it's pretty good. So she can even move a couple more steps sometimes and literally cut the cord off to where she's only got to hit backhands here. This is the only area she's going to hit backhands. Everything else She's going to hit forehands. If, if you did watch, it was one really good um, analogy or thought for playing tennis. If you followed Will Hamilton's uh, singles playbook, he talked about the sword versus the shield. And, and her sword is her forehand. Her shield is her backhand. I mean, sword's offense. Shield is defense. So her backhand's more defense. So we're going to move her. Let's see here. We're going to move her. Do you guys like my board? Oh, I took, I took this person's head off. Sorry, pusher. Uh, and she's going to be here now. And we're also going to want her to hit. If you have a big forehand, I want you to get comfortable. I like, I like people stepping into the ball on their forehand. But get comfortable, especially if you have to move out here for a couple forehands. Get comfortable hitting in the open stance. Write that down put it on your list to get comfortable hitting in the open stance because now when you get a shot over here and you're and it's on your forehand side here's the tennis racket and you're in an open stance your opponent i saw craig o'shaughnessy talk about this the other way the other day if you can't tell i'm a total tennis nut i'm obsessed with tennis just like you guys and he was talking about how when you're in the open stance People, people can't tell where you're going, that he would watch matches of the best players in the world when they'd be in the open stance out there. He couldn't tell if they were going to hit this way, inside out. That's an inside out shot. If you don't know the terminology, this is an inside out shot. Or you can hit it inside in. So the pusher is not going to know where you're going to go. Okay. And the cool thing about this is too, if you I like hitting the ball down the line from this area with your forehand because what happens if you're a little late? If you're a little late hitting inside in here, the ball is still going to land somewhere in the middle. So you're still in the point. And again, pushers, they're not really going to make you pay for, the, for your mistakes if, you are, uh, if they're still back at the baseline. Uh, there's a couple of them that can do it. But in general, we're just talking about people where you're dominating the point. So this is how we had Raven play most of the points, is, is we would have her in this position right here running shade and what she was really good at is hitting a heavy she does have a heavy top spin ball so she was hitting a lot of balls over here and we're pretending that most people you're playing are righty so it's having to go high to the backhand and what would happen is ultimately and let me just clear some stuff out within a couple of shots when she hit a really good shot and she got me to run a little bit or she got the ball really high to my backhand, I intentionally would give her a ball in here, okay? That's what I would do. Now, I'm gonna come back 
I'm going to stop sharing the screen. I'm going to come back and I'm going to look and see what do you guys think? Please be interactive. What do you guys think Raven should do at this point? Terry says he likes my board. Scott says he's a 4.0. Hi, Tony from Singapore. All right, Singapore, that's awesome. Love your videos, especially the ones with the uh, smash and the slicer. My problem is transitioning from the baseline to the net. I'm reluctant to move in. It's mental. This is very good that you're here then. Okay, what do you guys think? I'm going to give it a couple more seconds to see what you guys say. What do you guys think you should do when you're in that position? Step in and go down the line behind her. Short angle ball, question mark. If it's at a height, crush it. If it's low, go deep. She should step in and crush that forehand. <laughs> All right? So we're still getting a lot of crushing, which again, I've, I've kind of told crush, crush. Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let a couple more answers come through. If you guys want to win more match, she didn't come and say, I want to work on my technique because I just want to look better. She came and she said, I want to work on my top spin and my power because I want to win. I want to beat these pushers. Okay. Her end desire is win. Crush low deep and then volley out the point, says Paul. Okay. You guys are awesome. I love that you're on. But I, I but what I'm going to show you is that you're not place the vol place the ball for the volley. So everybody here is again thinking like you are wanting to play like Roger Federer. You're wanting to play like Martina Navratilova, right? Uh, it's fun to do that. Where you could drop the ball short to the right, says Scott. Okay, bingo. We're starting to get there. This is a play to win matches. This is a play to where you don't have to come off the court and say, I lost to the pusher as your whole team watched your game self-destruct. This is where they start to go, wow, you dominated every point. And then at the end, points were just falling off like they were coming off a tree, you know, like leaves coming off a tree. <laughs> it, was, it looked easy. Approach and come to the net, says Paul Scott. Okay. So here we are. We're in this area of the court. Remember, remember my statement, what I want you to do, the whole goal of today's lesson, and write this down, it's to take the skill off of your shoulders and put it on the pusher's shoulder, okay? So what you're going to do is you're going to move up here. The one skill you might have to work on for a little while because everybody's watching videos of Roger Federer hitting forehands, Rafael Nadal hitting forehands, Serena hitting forehands, Maria Sharapova hitting forehands. We all want those big blasting forehands. So you, what you might have neglected in your game is a chip forehand. So what we taught Raven to do is she came up and she hit a chip low ball right here. We didn't, we didn't aim for a line, right? We, we, uh, we just kept the ball low and trying to make the ball bounce right about here. Why are we doing that? Because now... For 90% of the people you're going to play, they have to run forward and they have to hit a backhand. That's number one. They have to hit a low backhand, which is not easy to do from this position. They also have to make a skillful play to win the point. What they're going to have to do, and they have to make a tough decision. Let me disconnect a lot of stuff here. I'm going to do a lot of erasing. Okay. We're just going to focus on the pusher. So the pusher has to come up here, hit a backhand, and make a major decision. It's a big point. Am I going to hit this shot down the line and come in? Am I going to hit this shot cross court deep and come in? Am I going to hit a short little angle shot and come in? Like these are tough things to do. And and, and am I going to come in or am I going to say, I don't like being back here and I'm going to bust my butt back to the baseline. Okay. All right. That's all the decisions. And remember, 
our hero here, Raven, she's running shade. She's running shade. So she's keeping 80% of the point on her forehand side. She's And, and, and so let's take a, a look at a couple scenarios. Let's say the pusher gets to the ball early and looks like their racket's out in front. Well, they're probably going to hit the shot two places. They might be able to hit a little angle shot, which is tough to do. And they might be able to hit it cross court to her backhand. That's the best case scenario. That's if they're getting there early. But if you do a good shot, a good job with this combination to where you get them off the court somehow, they're running, they're hitting the high ball, they're way off the baseline. Maybe they're way off the court. Maybe you got them over here because you just hit an inside out shot and they're running over here struggling to get to the ball. And you do a good job at hitting the ball low and it's skidding. I want, I want you to be able to make this thing skid a little bit. They're late getting to the ball. Let me do a lot of erasing. Holy cow. Let me do a lot of erasing. All right. So they're most likely bent over, late getting to the ball, having to dig the ball out of the ground. So you're here, you're running shade. What's going to happen are two likely scenarios. They're going to hit the ball short here. Or they, a best case scenario, they might be able to hit the ball deep around here. And you just move over. And you hit to the open court, whether they are running back or, or whether they are coming in. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Okay? Now, now you're comfortable hitting a forehand from there. You got, you got a lot more court, so you got a lot more length to, to use. You got a lot more time. And, and also, you've got an open target. You know, you got an open target. Think about, think about that situation where you got this big open target. Whoops, I lost my court. I got to get the court back, guys. Let me, let me get the court back. We've lost our court. I've gone a race crazy. So we're going to type in tennis court. Don't worry, the court will come back. There's the court. And we'll place it. All right, cool. So we got our court back. And so imagine this scenario, which is going to happen for most of you. The pushers right here stay in the middle. You've got a short ball. And you're thinking, OK, to win this point, I've got to really crush this ball here. Or I've got to crush this ball here. Because if they get a racket on it, they're a pretty good hand-eye coordination to where they're going to feed up Lob City balls to me. It's either going to float, which I don't like, or they're going to lob it over my head. So I'm thinking, i got to really make this thing perfect. That's, that's choice one. Okay. Choice two is you now have, let me erase the push. Okay. I'm going to have to erase the hitter first. Okay. You now have a pusher here. Okay. You're running shade over here. And you've got a full open court. Okay. Which situation would you rather be at? And answer this, not what would you rather do for like your highlight? Okay. Not what would you rather do for like the highlight to win the match, but what situation would you rather be in? What situation would you rather be in to win the match? Okay. To, to actually have the whole team staying there. Which shot would you rather have to execute? A big approach shot, then run to the net and hit an awesome volley or an overhead or stand there, wait for a weak ball to come, have a wide open court to hit a winner in. What, what, what would you rather do? I want to hear some, I want to hear some comments, guys. I want to know. Give me some feedback. What would you rather do? All right. So I know I would rather hit an easy shot to the open court. That's what I would rather do. Even if, even if I lose my nerve and I don't feel like hitting the top spin shot, I could probably even just push it by her. I could push it by the pusher. That's one thing. That's if you get the ball. Now, what I want to do to kind of finish this uh, live today is I also want to talk about, I erased the court again. I'm an idiot. Oh my gosh, Pete. What is wrong with you? I'm choking under pressure. I'm choking under pressure right now. Here comes the court back. We'll make it a little bigger. 
because there are there's one more thing I want I want to give you guys one more nugget here one more golden nugget before you go out there and run this play because I think you can run this play pretty successfully. All right, so we're gonna place this place the image. Another thing I want you to consider. Here you are getting ready to hit your passing shot. If you hit the ball up the middle, you're trying to hit your short ball and your ball ends up more up the middle and they're coming in versus on the wing. See, if you make the ball and they have to come in on you off the wing, I want you to go to the open court, okay? But I want to take all the pressure and all the skill making duties off of you. If they come here and they're staying right in front of you, waiting for a volley, rather than have to worry and do this last second thought process of, am I going to hit a passing shot here? Am I going to hit a passing shot here? Because they might get lucky and just flub a, a volley. What I want you to do instead, when they come up the middle and they come right up the middle to you, I just want you to lob over their head and I want you to find their backhand. Okay. Most likely this is most people's backhand wing. Just lob it high over the backhand and don't even try and make it a perfect lob. Just try and make a lob. Let me undo some drawing just so I'm crystal clear. Make a lob past the service line. As long as that ball, that was, that was not very close. Just as long as you get that ball past the service line and high. They're not going to do anything with it. Again, if they backed up and now they're hitting a shot somewhere in here, you've again got them to make a major decision. Am I going to come back in and close the net? Am I going to retreat? And as I'm retreating, most likely they're dumping the ball somewhere short in here. And now you can have more confidence to put the ball away. This is the way, this is a great way. Not that there's just one way to beat a pusher, but this is like the first play I would run. Okay. This is the first play I would run against a pusher if I'm like losing and I'm always losing at the finish line. All right, overheads. I love cross court or easy open court. So that's that's the lesson, guys. I hopefully you guys like it. I'm, I'll keep it open for some questions. Another thing I want uh, to just let you guys um, in on, Raven actually came out last night Raven came out last night and, and I was doing a bunch of serves to her. Okay. I was doing a bunch of serves to her because uh, I'm analyzing serves right now for a new course we have coming out. Uh, the, 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 um, the free three part series will be coming out next week. So be looking for it probably next Tuesday. And the name of the course is break their serve, break their spirit. Okay. And the reason why we're making this course is that you know, we're always focused on the glory shots. We're focused on the serve. We're focused on the forehand. We love to go out there and hit. Uh, but, but there's so many people out there who do not have a very good return. They just kind of flub the ball up. And they can't read if a kick serve's coming, a slice serve's coming. They don't know if a hard serve's coming. And there's not, a lot, there's not enough information out, out there on it online. There's not enough coaching on it online. There's certainly not enough coaching on it at your club, and it's something that everybody needs to work on. It's 50% of the game, you, you, and the only way you can win a match is to break serve. So if you guys want to have your serve analyzed for free, I'll write it down. Because I can, I, I, But you have to agree that I'm going to use it as part the, the payoff is or how it works for both of us is I will use it as educational material for my students and for you. So you can, you can email me, just, just take a, a video on your phone. Don't, don't stress out about it. Just take like a, a 30 second video on your phone. Let me just break out my phone here and show you step-by-step -step on how to do Because sometimes people are too intimidated. Just come here and click on camera, record yourself. So we'll just record this for a second. Stop it. Go back to your gallery. You have a gallery or, or something. Go back to your gallery and share it and email it to me. That's all, that's all you got to do. And, and just literally 30 to 40 seconds of returns. If you want to do that, you can send it in. Okay? If you want to do that, you can send it in.
What did you guys think of today's lesson? If you like today's lesson, um, definitely thumbs up this video. Uh, if you have questions, now's a great time to ask. Let me read some, some comments here. Place the ball in volume, hit a drop shot, and then go cross court, open court. Susan, okay, Susan Ferguson's on. Hey, Susan. Drop shot, oops, left. In my mind, when playing, <laughs> I am Roger Federer. Kevin says, I am Roger Federer in my mind when I'm playing. And that's good. Chip versus slice, or are we are we talking about the same shot? Yeah, chip and slice is uh, is the same thing. We had Scott who said it's a great play. Pete, I think the strategy lessons are great and would like to see more, especially for doubles. Okay, very cool. Scott, we are gonna do more doubles. We are also uh, inside Break Your Serve, Break Your Spirit. We have a lot of doubles. Uh, we have a whole double strategy section, by the way, too, to help you break, break, serve. Thank you very much, guys. I had a great time with you all. We've been on for about 40 minutes together. All right, agree, more, more strategy. We like the strategy, okay. We'll, we'll do more strategy. Your wish is my command. Any other, any other requests? That's good, we're taking requests. What else, what should the next, what specific thing besides this double strategy, what should the next live be on? What, sh what exactly should we cover? I'll wait for that response. What exactly would you guys like me to cover? And I'll just wait a couple minutes. Make sure you like this video before you go. I appreciate it. I see that we got 19 likes. It'd be cool that by the time we left, we had 25 to 30 likes. That would be pretty awesome. You can also watch this replay on YouTube when it's done, so you can come back to it. What balls to come in on? Boss and Harvard like to know in doubles, what shots should we come in on? Okay, we can talk about that and how to come in. By the way, that is definitely inside of the... Uh, the new course we have coming up. Beating lobbers in doubles, Susan says. That's, that's a good one. I tend to charge the net too much. We need to be more comfortable handling opponents moving forward in doubles. Okay. Good stuff. Any more? I love it. You guys are giving me some great material. You guys, hey, you guys are the captain of the ship. I, I want to help you guys whatever uh, you need. I would like to see more workout practice strategy. Okay, that, that'd be fun. Super intuitive. Uh, time for a glass of chilled wine here in Brussels. Okay, Terry. Well, cheers. Cheers. Cheers to you, my friend. Maybe, we'll, maybe someday we'll do a wine strategy session where we all have wine. We'll have like a little wine party. Wouldn't that be fun? Should we do that? We could have like strategy themes where we have where we're all drinking wine or water or kale juice if you're Jeff Solenstein. <laughs> let's go. Jonathan says, let's go. Let's do that. He likes the idea of a of a wine, a theme party. Chips and salsa party, pizza party. <laughs> Very cool. All right, I'll hang out for a couple more minutes, see if you guys have any more requests. Uh, also, what should be a, a, a strategy theme? What should we do? Should we really do that? I think that'd be fun. We could have lunch together. Great kitchen. Thank you, Scott. It is a great kitchen. And uh, here's a little insider tip. I always put the board there, especially when there's dishes in the sink, okay? especially when there's dishes in the sink. It sure looks like gray goose to me. Okay, gray goose, that could be fun. That could be fun. Yeah, any more? You guys can even ask if you have a personal question. Anything at all, you guys can ask right now. We'll, 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 we'll hang out. It's, uh, I have a couple more minutes. It's, it's 12.44, I'll stay on till about 12.50 with you guys and any questions you guys have on anything. It could be tennis, it could be something about my life, it could be something about the kitchen, whatever you want, whatever you want. And we can certainly take more tennis questions. We can certainly take more tennis questions. That would be nice. We're up to 25 likes. Very cool. What do you guys think of these live hangouts? Do you guys like these live hangouts? 
let me know. I find them very fun. I love to interact with you guys. Uh, so I like doing it. When will you be speaking with Salzenstein? Okay, so I did the interview with Jeff. I'm super excited about it. If you guys don't know, I do have a new channel. Check it out, Dreamers Over 30. And what the channel is about is it's about for people who are over the age of 30 and they have a passion, like tennis, obviously my passion. And, uh, you know, when I was younger, I actually, younger, 33, I kind of got out of tennis because I realized, oh my gosh, my body's killing me. I can't make another dollar teaching tennis. I can't teach another hour because I am just dead. And so um, I got out of tennis. But when I came back into tennis, I thought of it more like a business. I didn't, didn't think about being on the court to make, a, to make a dollar for an hour. And it's been a lot more rewarding. We've been able to turn that into a six-figure business. And so Dreamers Over 30 for, is going to help people, for anybody who has a passion that they want to get out there, just learn the ins and outs of what you need to do. And Jeff, I interviewed. It's already, it's, the interview's already done. We are just editing it. And I hope to have it out. Uh, I hope to have it out by Friday or Saturday. And if you're not on my email list, get on my email list because that's where you'll, I'll send an email letting people know it's coming out. And it is a great interview. Jeff was amazing. Jeff was awesome. And we talked for an hour. And it is, it was an interview where he was so interesting. And, and you can just see how mentally tough he is. You know, being on the tour 11 years kind of as a journeyman, that's not easy to do. And, and Jeff really poured his heart out in the interview. And, and I learned a lot. So it was really cool. All right, Susan, how to play doubles with a partner who doesn't understand doubles. That's good, Susan. That should be a topic for sure. Uh, let's see. And I'm leaving soon to play playing a final game in my tournament. Congratulations. Keep your fingers crossed. He's not a pusher, but knows. But who knows? Maybe I'll play more inspired because of this meeting. I hope you do. Great, great luck. Match, not game. I knew that. That's okay, Danny. I wish I continued with tennis 10 years ago rather than playing soccer. Yeah, well, that's okay, but you're playing for life. That's, that's another theory I have is a lot of people who really get obsessed with tennis in their uh, 40s, 50s, and 60s, they always say, I wish I would have started earlier. And here's a little insider tip. Uh, you guys inspire me. I grew up, I was one of those players that you might have been jealous of. I was number one in the state. Uh, I was pretty much always top five in my section. I played national tournaments. I played division one college tennis. You know, I was a good player, not good enough to be a pro. Um, but a lot of people like me, by the time we get out of college, we are completely burned out. And I would, it, it'd be interesting to know a study. I would probably say 50 to 60, maybe even as many as 70% of people like me are not playing tennis now in their 40s, 50s, and 60s. We're letting this great gift go away uh, because we feel like, oh, well, we can't get any better. We don't have time to dedicate to the game. And I kind of been there, done that. Where people who start later in life, they can keep seeing like, I can keep getting better. You know, I, I, I like this game. And so I think it's, it's, in some regards, it's healthier sometimes to start older with a little more perspective and have this awesome game for the rest of your life. So, so don't feel bad that you started too late because even the people who started early, like me, for 99.9% .9 of us, we don't become professionals to where you can actually make a living. We just get pretty darn good and then we quit the game, which is terrible. I love that I'm still connected to where I teach. There are certain students that I have where I can go for a hit, but I don't play matches as much as you guys. So I'm, I'm um, envious and a little bit of, uh, and excited for you guys, okay? Uh, now tennis is my passion. Yes, Danny. Awesome. Do you have any specific strategy for the first games? Like when you're first starting a match? Yes, I do. I do have, we, that will be another topic. Uh, in general, you should go with your, you, with kind of like your playbook, what you're comfortable with and what you know, you're going to make a lot of shots at Pete. I'm 69 and only started playing a few years ago. Scott, that is awesome. That is great. And there's lots of people out there like you, Scott. And I think it's, I think it's fantastic. And uh, good for you. Okay, we have one more minute. Any final questions, thoughts? We are up to 27 likes. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with us today. I really do appreciate it. 
Um, make sure that you do go to my new channel if you haven't checked it out. I think if you have any dream or passion, or even if you have somebody in your life who are like, you know what, they just, they just haven't been able to get their act together. That was what this was kind of inspired with too. You know, I've had some family members I'm like, I, you know, they could have just did this or just did that or just knew this. Things might have turned out different for them. Uh, we'll get into that. I get into that a lot more on Dreamers Over 30. I don't want to do it right now. But, you know, if you have anybody in your life, they don't even, they could be under 30 too. If it's like a grandson or granddaughter who you're like, they need to just like figure stuff out. Dreamers Over 30 is, is, is a lot for that. Okay um there we go you are right i feel i understand the sport a lot better now i'm older says danny okay guys thank you so much uh what i'm going to do now is i am going to turn off the broadcast i do want to thank you guys for following this video also uh if you want to join one last thing if you haven't joined our tennis lover sweepstakes yet you can go to my home page on my channel and you can join a raffle to where if you like uh, the idea of, of, of hanging out with me and my buddy Matt and going to the Western and Southern Open for free and going to a two-day uh, clinic with us in Cincinnati, that's first prize. Second prize is a Roger Federer Wilson Tennis Racket hat and t-shirt. And third prize is a $100 gift certificate to play your court from Scott Baxter, so thank you, Scott, for that. And fourth prize is you get free training on how to get more power on your serve. Danny says, don't go. I get angry when losing points. What do I do? Uh, and I lose it in doubles. Yeah, we don't wanna do that, Jonathan. We need to keep it together for your partner. You don't wanna be freaking them out and scaring them. So we got a lot of stuff. Terry says, I'm 73, triple bypass, and was on the court after two months, thanks to tennis. Wow. that's pretty awesome. That's pretty awesome. Really great stuff. Thank you guys. Uh, we will see you on future hangouts, future videos. Be looking out next week. We're starting a new uh, free train series called break, break their serve, break their spirit, super important stuff. And thank you guys for your time and attention today. I realize that there's just so much outside, you know, going on in your world and all over the internet and that you guys hung out with me today is definitely a huge honor and I really appreciate it.